You may have played many, many games like PUBG or Fortnite, and all of them have some physics, right? Like you, you fall, you, you fall like you fall in the real world. Even a simple game like Angry Birds has like, you know, some physics inside it. So the question I have for you is, how do people build a physics engine for these games? They all use something called a physics engine that makes them behave like the real world. And the question I have for you is, by building a physics engine like this, can we actually learn about physics itself? In other words, what can we learn about the real world by building a physics engine or a toy world, a simulation? That's the question. And you're gonna be building a bunch of these simulations or examples of physics on your own for multiple concepts and learn. This has been the dream. What if you could learn science not by listening to a lecture from somebody or watching a video, but by building code on your own, playing with it, exploring it and understanding. So this could look like you know, building a ball that bounces to begin with and then eventually building more and more complex things as you can see, whether it's the reflection of light or gases that are moving or electrons that are moving in a wire. You're gonna be building a bunch of these on your own playing with it and learning. And you're gonna be doing this with JavaScript. Uh, and we're gonna begin. Today, the first thing you're gonna do is create a ball with code and make the ball move. That's what you're gonna do today. And we're gonna begin that right now. What you're gonna see, what you're seeing right in front of me is the screen that we're gonna be using. It's called p5.js. The .js stands for JavaScript. Now, how many of you have some experience with programming? Now, that's great. If you have some experience, that's okay. If you don't, that's even better because I'm gonna assume that you have absolutely no experience programming at all. And we're gonna begin with from scratch and actually learn how to do science through code. And you're gonna be implementing this at the end of this episode itself. So what do I see here? Let's just begin. What I see here is like something called setup and then it has something called create canvas in it. I have no idea what coding is. I'm just gonna run this and see what it does. What it does, it creates a canvas. Right, that's what I can see. And there is something, there are two numbers that are next to the create canvas. One says 400, comma 400. Uh, the best way to understand what they do is I'm just gonna play with it. I'm gonna say 400, comma, I don't know, 600 and see what it does. Uh, okay, it just makes it longer as you can see. And if I make this back to 400 and if I make this 600, now what it does is it expands it, makes it more like landscape mode. So what you're doing in that setup function is that you're just setting things up. You do that once, set up the canvas, and then you have another function called draw. This is what we're gonna be playing with. Now, one of the best ways to start, so p5.js was created mostly for artists and creative people and folks who may not exactly want to become software developers to enjoy building things and learning things through code. So one of the best ways to learn with code is to draw with code. And so that's what you're seeing after that. You set up your canvas, you do that once, and you draw, typically again and again and again. So it's separately there. Why do I say you're gonna be drawing again and again and again? You will know in a bit. But let's see what this draw does. There's only one thing inside it. It says background and there is some number inside. That number actually stands for a color. So whatever color is there is what you're seeing right here. I'm gonna change that color. Uh, you can change that by just telling the color itself. You can use numbers also, RGB numbers, but you can just use the color. And I'm gonna use the color sky blue because it's nice. And there it is. So uh, the first thing you do inside the draw is create a sky blue color. But what was our goal today? Why are we even doing this? We wanna see if we can create a ball in this world and then make the ball move. So a ball basically seen from straight is just a circle, right? So uh, let me try and draw a circle. And uh, maybe that's how circle is drawn. I just say circle and then the computer draws a circle. Do you think this is gonna work? Think about it. It does not, it does not draw a circle. Uh, why does it not draw a circle? Because computers are kind of dumb. They want you to tell more things to be able to do something. Like you can't just tell a human being, go draw a circle. They'd be like, okay, this guy didn't tell me anything more. I'll just draw some circle. But it so happens that most of the times the computer wants you to tell, where do I draw the circle? How big should the circle be? And more things. So how do you do that? Maybe, just like you can see, right? There's a setup, all these blue color things set up, create canvas, all of them have these two brackets next to them and something's going inside, right? Maybe this also needs something like that, the circle. I just put two brackets. Do you think this is gonna work? One second, it doesn't. The brackets are fine, but there's nothing inside the brackets, right? p5.js is telling me something. It's telling me the circle was expecting at least three arguments. What is this word arguments? 
it's basically like for canvas we told right hey how big should the canvas be 400 400 what was that 400 pixels to the right and 400 pixels width and 400 pixels long that's what those two numbers meant similarly it expects some three numbers here and i'm going to i'm going to write those three numbers and you're going to guess what those three numbers are doing let's see i'm going to write uh, 100 comma 100 comma 30 will this draw a square let's see I said square. Will this draw a circle? Yes, it does draw a circle. Uh, it's, it's a nice happy ball that's like floating over there. Now the question is, what are these three numbers doing though? Right? The last number is actually pretty direct. If I change it, you'll understand. I'm going to make that 50. Circle got bigger. I'm going to make that 100. Circle got much bigger. So what is that last number changing? It's just changing. There it is. It's just changing the size of the ball or the circle, right? It actually changes the rate, the diameter of it. So that 30 is basically the width or the diameter of that circle. But what are these two numbers? 100 comma 100. What are they telling? That's interesting because now once again, I'm going to play with it. I'm going to change it and you can predict what's going to happen. I'm going to make this 100, 200. The ball moved to the right, right? I'm going to make that 300. The ball moved even more to the right. So you're beginning to guess what that first number tells. What do you think it tells? I'm going to make it 50. Moves it all the way back. So what it's really telling is how far from this line this ball should be horizontally. How far to go? How many steps to take? Now what is this other ball do? Other color, other number doing? The second number? You might begin to guess it already. See, I'll show you. I'm going to make it 200. Goes down. I'm going to make it 300. Goes down even more. So that's controlling what distance it should be from the top line. So what distance from the line on the left and what distance from the top. Now that's what these two are doing. For which point? The center of that ball, or the center of the circle. So where should I draw the center of the circle and how large should it be? These three numbers do it. And that's it. You're done. Now you can draw a circle wherever you want to at whatever, with whatever size you want to. Now you have a ball and you know where to put it, how big to make it. But this way of actually telling where to put it, right? You gave two numbers, one how far from here, how many steps to take to the right, and then how many steps to go below. This kind of telling where to go has a name. It's called x, y coordinates. Have you heard of x, y coordinates before? Now, like you all told me, some of you may have heard of it, some of you may have played with it a bit, some of you may even know it quite well. The question I've always had is, why choose to do this? Why actually choose to tell where something is in like some flat 2D space by telling how far to go from here and how much down or up to go. Why do that? I also have some other deeper questions like, hey, am I sure that if I use these two numbers, I can get to every point? You can think about all these questions and a great way to do that, I was thinking about it. I was thinking about where's the real world application? Where do I use this? And funnily, I thought about the balloon shooting that I've done uh, on at the beach. There are a bunch of balloons and my friends tell me which balloon I should shoot. and I win only if I shoot that balloon because they know that these guns are crazy and I might shoot some other balloon by chance. So I built a version of that uh, over here because we, I can't actually make you shoot balloons. And what I want you to do with your learning coach is uh, tell them which balloon you want them to shoot. And if they're able to do that, that means you've been able to tell them which balloon, right? And how, do you go, how are you gonna do that? Just go play with them uh, and then see which of these balloons you want them to shoot. And through that, let's see what you learn about these questions that I just asked. Now you just played the probably the least fun balloon shooter game in the world because you can't, it's not actual real balloons. But the point of why telling things based on how much to go to the right and how much to go below makes a little bit more sense to you. And you could also see every single balloon can be reached that way, right? And this is not just like common to these kinds of scenarios where we use numbers. Even in something like chess, the professionals use codes to say which square to which square, like say A1, B1, like there are, as you can see, each of these squares has an address and there has two numbers. In, in this case, it's not a number, it's A to, you know, A, B, C, D on one side and numbers on the other. So it makes it even more easy. So what you're really noticing here is that anytime I have like a 2D space like this, I can use two numbers, X and Y they are called to tell where to go. X is usually the horizontal, Y is the vertical. And uh, some, many students ask me like, why X, Y, why not some other name? If I'd called it A, B, would something have happened? No, if I'd called it horizontal H and then vertical V, H, V, nothing would have happened. So the point in these kinds of questions usually is that it doesn't matter what we call it 
as long as all of us call it the same thing because that's the whole point it's like driving on the left side of the road it's is left better than the right not really many countries drive on the right side of the road in fact uh, it's few countries that drive on the left but what matters is that we all agree to drive on one side and then stick to it it's called a convention so calling this xy it's just a convention as long as we all agree what x means and what y means we'll be fine now this is great we've understood a lot both about coding and about xy but my baby ball is still not moving look at it it's still a stationary ball and i want to make it move now if i want to make it move horizontally what would i change right you probably know right if i make this like uh, 110 and if i like hit auto refresh now i'm going to make it 110 it goes a little bit forward 20 little bit more forward like 30 more forward you might see it like small increments let me make it like big and 70 much more as you can see so if i can theoretically just keep changing it and click refresh again and again it'll it should kind of look like it's moving now i want to vary that x right that's what i want to do i want the x to change if the x the position basically keeps changing then the body is moving how do i do that i'm actually going to use something called a variable you might be familiar with it or you may not right a variable is something that you expect to vary so you just like use a variable i've used something called x here but the computer would have no idea what x is so i'm going to go and do something called declaring this variable and uh, don't worry too much about the technicalities over here i'm just going to go all the way up here and declare something called x and i'm going to make it 100 so var x equals 100 just tells the computer hey i'm going to create a variable which is basically a box called x i'm going to name that box x and i'm going to put the value 100 inside it what do you think the output of this code would be take a guess that's right the same as before nothing changes nothing changes now if i make this 200 it's the same thing as going and changing the number inside the circle as far as the computer is concerned when it goes here and reads x it just goes okay show me the box x what's the value inside cool i'm going to put it now i'm going to make this a little bit more interesting for us i made it back to 100 now i'm going to add another line i want you to make a prediction in the next line i'm saying x equals uh, 200 that's my line so var x equals 100 then in the next line i write x equals 200 what do you think the output would be would the circle be drawn at 100 or 200 or somewhere else great so let's see what it does it draws it at 200 why because computers usually execute things sequentially they go okay var x equals 100 take a box called x create a box called x put the value 100 in it the next line x equals 200 usually right in computers this equal to is very very weird this equal to basically means whatever is on the right side put that into the box that's there on the left side in this case what's the box x x equals 200 just means okay take whatever is there inside x in this case 100 throw it away and then put 200 inside so when the computer reads this particular line what's the value of x it's 200 so it draws the circle at 200 now you're beginning to congratulations actually you're just beginning to use variables in your code and you will be using this little bit later right right now like today now i'm going to do something a little bit more interesting i'm going to say instead of saying x equals 200 i'm going to say x equals x plus 100 all of these are different ways to kind of achieve the same thing what do you think is going to happen now take a moment think about it x equals x plus 100 is a really weird line to see in mathematics for example right imagine x value was 2 so 2 equals 2 plus 100 never 2 right like so what do we mean by this in computer science the equal to in computer science is not the equal to in math the equals here basically means whatever is on the right side take that sval take the value of that and put it into what's there on the left side it's called the assignment operator not the equal to operator that's the name in case you're curious so just assigns it so what should x become now when the computer reaches that line the second line it will be the x's value will be 100 so it will go okay cool 100 plus 100 is 200 take that kick away the original value 100 and put this new value 200 inside so you will see the exact output as last time right now what if i make this x equals x plus 1 you can't see any difference because between 100 pixels and 101 pixels we don't have the eyesight to figure it out okay this is interesting now pause the code over here stop here 
make sure you understand every single line of code up to this point because I'm, after this I'm going to do something really weird. So take a few minutes, talk to your coach if required, and then let me take this one line of code, x equals x plus 1, and move it to inside this draw function. Now notice something, this function setup happens once and you see this bracket here and this curly, it's called a curly bracket. Whatever is inside that is what's in this function. Similarly for draw, there's this curly bracket here and another curly bracket here, right? I've taken this x equals x plus 1 that was happily outside and put it inside. What do you think is going to happen? Make a prediction. Now did you discuss this with your coach? Now when I was in my class, one of the students said something like, okay, you know what this will do? This will draw the circle at 101 x coordinate, 100 y and 30 with 30 size. You can't really see the difference. Another student was very clever. He said, hey, listen, look at this. The computer looks at, you know, instructions line by line. When it's drawing a circle, what's the value of x? It's just 100, right? So it'll draw the, draw the circle at 100 and that's it. Who cares whether you change the x to 101 after that? The computer doesn't care. In fact, he's closest to being correct. Now, but let's see what really happens. In fact, that's the correct wrong answer to this question, saying that it'll just draw it at 100 comma 100. But let's see what really happens. The circle begins to move. What? Now, if that makes sense to you, that doesn't make sense to me. Because it does not, it did not make sense to me the first time I saw it. Let me run it again. Why is the circle moving? Now, this is where we have to talk about the part that I mentioned, which I said you set up the canvas once, you set up once, but you draw again and again and again. I was kind of hinting at something. The thing is, this draw function is a weird bird, right? It actually keeps running over and over and over again. That's how this platform, this thing has been created. It's an infinite loop. So what till now was happening? Even though it looked like, if I just remove this line of code for a moment, what I'm doing there is called commenting it. it that computer will you know, neglect that line. If I run it, it looks like there is a circle being drawn at 100, 100, 30. But that's not what's happening. What's really happening is that the computer goes, reads this function draw, creates a background in sky blue color, goes cool, background of sky blue color, nothing else. Then it says next line, circle at x, 100, 30. What is x? It's 100. Draws a circle there, right? Then because this line doesn't exist, it will go all the way back, draw another background, right on top of it, put another circle, exactly same position, one more background, circle, background, circle, background, circle, like hundreds of times, like in this case, like 60 times every second because my laptop sets the frames. Keeps doing it. So even though it looks like there is one circle on your screen, if you could somehow tilt it and look, it's like a flip book with the circle at the same place again and again and again and again and again. With like a background circle, background circle, background circle. Yeah, now that's why when I make this inside the draw loop, so we can call it a draw loop now because it's a infinite loop and congratulations, you're already learned, you already learned what a variable is. Now you also know what a loop is. A loop is when you make the computer do the same thing, like something again and again and again, and uh, in an easy way. So when you say x equals x plus one, now what happens? So the student who told me the circle will be drawn exactly at 100 comma 100, he's right. But that's just for the first time. Now after that, what does x become? x becomes x plus 1 or 101. And then it goes all the way back, it loops back, draws the background again. So the circle was drawn, flip the book, a background's drawn again. But this time when you draw the circle, where is it going to draw it? A little bit forward because the x value now is 101. Then it becomes 102, flip the book again, one more background, now draw at 102. Now flip this really, really fast at 60 times every second or if your computer is like slower, a little bit. Even if you do it at 20 times every second, our brain will start seeing motion, which is what you see over here. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, you're also noticing like this is kind of what motion really is, right? The position of something changing, 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 changing. And then we call that that thing is moving. I'm not going to talk to you about the physics in this episode. I'm going to talk to you about it in the next episode. What's the physics behind? What, are the, what is the physics we're learning? But what I want you to do now is take all this learning that you've had, right? About JavaScript, about variables, about loops, put it together to make a ball move, in your case, vertically, with your learning coach and your team and share it with each other.